what we are seeing in the Western world right now is that the consumers are not supporting as much as the political leadership was expecting the uh, EV ramp up. And the consumers, they are very uh, clear in what they expect from us. They expect safe, clean, and affordable mobility. And safe and clean they are, affordable is the challenge. So they want uh, basically to buy uh, EV cars at the price of internal combustion engine cars. They don't want to pay more for the EV technology, which I can totally understand. And I want to tell them that we are working super hard to achieve that. All right. So Carlos, yes, he Carlos said that with a straight face. He literally said, we want, he knows what we want. We don't know what we want. He knows that we want electric cars, safe, cheap electric cars for the same price as gas cars. That's what we want. I don't, I didn't know that. I mean, thanks Carlos for 40 million bucks. He gets to be this, you know, brilliant, brilliant mind that gets to know what we want. Yet, if you look in the entire car market, it doesn't appear that that's what they want. Even cheap EVs aren't selling. Go drive by a Ford dealership and look at how many Mach-E's are lined up, priced at the same price as a gas car. They're not selling. People don't want these things. And once they get them, the depreciation crushes them. I read an article the other day where I think it was 46% of the people who own EVs don't want them anymore. They want to get a gas car. And they cite convenience. Convenience, of course, depreciation's horrible. It's a huge pain in the ass. So, so he thinks, though, that suddenly if it was priced the same, we would want them. No. Listen, if, I, if I'm going to buy an EV, I want an EV because I want to save money on gas. I want to save the planet from the climate change. And I, it fits into my lifestyle. But for most people, unfortunately, it doesn't. Certainly wouldn't. If my wife and I both had EVs, it would be a fight to the death. Who gets to park where in the garage? Now, if my wife, daughter, and I all had EVs, it would be a triple fight. It would be a beyond the Thunderdome battle to figure out who gets to charge their car first and who needs to be where in the morning. Sitting at charging stations makes no sense. People don't want to do that. But he believes that we do. And even though he said he's working on getting the prices down, he launched the new Daytona EV Formal pricing, and some of you I know were thinking, well, Brad and TK and Butter leaked these $82,000, $68,000 pricing, and they're a lot less now, and I'll go through that in a second with you. Well, no, remember, we we shared with you the pricing of what the cars are going to look like most likely when they show up at the dealerships fully loaded at their max price. They're sharing with you starting price. Remember how that went with the Hornet? I don't know if anyone's ever found one that is priced at the starting price that Dodge shared the price was going to be. I don't think any car maker ever does. They say the starting price and then good luck finding one of those things that's missing a steering wheel and, you know, a radio. I, it's, it doesn't happen. They're all going to have options on them. And what Dodge is doing is they're filling these things with options that cost a fortune that dramatically increase the price. Let's check this out. So this is the pricing that I shared with you a week ago. 68570 fully loaded, plus screw, blacktop package, sun and sound, all this stuff. Heated seats. Imagine, these are all options. You don't get these things. So blind spot and cross path detection. All these things are add-ons to get the price up for the RT. Then for the scat pack, adding all that stuff in here takes you to $82,170. For a car that will get destroyed by a Tesla Model 3. So let's first, before we go to the performance, let's just real quick, just review the breakdown that Car and Driver laid out perfectly here, which is the Charger Daytona RT will start at 61590 which includes the destination charge. When you see the $59,000 price out there, they stripped the destination charge, but people figured out, a lot of the news outlets figured out that you're not getting a, getting around that, so this is the actual price. Starting, remember this, start at almost 14000 more than the 2023 gas-powered RT. The Charger Daytona Scat Pack will carry a $75,000 price, 
over $20,000 more than the 2023 Scat Pack with the V8 engine. But but Brad, you're going to get a faster car in the RT than a gas Scat Pack. I heard one guy on a video say yesterday, and I couldn't get my hands through the screen to shake him really, really hard to explain to him that it's it's not that that's not the point. Yes, I like going fast, but fast EV to EV, the Daytona RT is going to lose to so many cars, including Hyundai's and Teslas all day long, base Teslas. These things are going to get killed. Why? Because they're 5,800 pounds, the top speed. They're going to get killed, like 134 miles an hour for these things. They're going to get destroyed. So the Scat Pack being $20,000 higher creates a, uh, a situation where now you're paying for basically a Hellcat speed car that will get killed by a Tesla for much less money. Okay, got it. Um, I'm not sure I want that. By the way, my Hellcat will do 200 miles an hour. This thing will stop at 134 miles an hour. But Brad, I don't need to go that fast. Good for you. That's okay. But if I'm paying this money, I would like that capability. And this is a car enthusiast channel. And this is supposed to be a car enthusiast car. And there are people out there that would like to be able to do a higher speed than 134 miles an hour on a track safely, not on the way to Las Vegas with a bunch of their buddies like I've never done before in my life. That, that's, I think that's, that's the real point here. But then if we go down to, and by the way, these first year cars are going to have the, the stage kits on them. So I imagine next year there's a chance that the prices come down. But how many of you, by a show of hands in the room, have faith in Dodge and Stellantis to actually drop prices and then add back in the stage kit expense. They might drop the price a little bit, but not a full amount. They're going to certainly try to capitalize on this and say, well, instead of $61,590, it's $59,000, but for $4,000 more, you can get the stage kit. I mean, either way, they're going to win. I'm going to bet. We'll see. But then when we talk about performance is where I just get frustrated, and that's, you know, I would just expect a little bit more for the amount of money we're going to pay. Let me find this here. All right, so here we are. The Scat Pack, the seventy-five dollars or $82,000 loaded version, will do 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds. Top speed of about 134 miles an hour. And the range, I think the range was somewhere in the 2s, 220 or something like that. It's, it's a really low range. So... Let's compare that, and I want to thank a subscriber for mentioning in one of my videos that one of my comparisons I did here, I did not have this box unchecked, which automatically added in a 7,500 tax, tax credit and, and gas savings. So I'm going to uncheck that box, so we're dealing with apples to apples price. So this melted jelly bean here, some of you say you hate how it looks. You can hate how it looks all you want. Because if you're in a Dodge Charger Daytona EV, you're going to be looking at the back of it. 303 miles in range, significantly more range, much better charging network. I think everyone can agree, like 50,000 charging networks across the country. 163 miles an hour top speed versus 134. And 0 to 60 in 2.9 versus, was it 3.3, I think it was? 3.3 or was it 3.1? 3.3 seconds, 2.9. So this little melted jelly bean here will crush this gigantic thing at a bargain price of 54,990. But what about adding all the options, Brad? You know, it's not apples to apples if you add all the options in. Okay, well, remember, I'm comparing this to the scat pack. So we're talking $55,000 versus $82,000 with everything that Dodge offers. So we're talking close to what, $25,000 plus $1,000? Well, let's go ahead and add every option we can add here, which would be the red paint. These other colors are $1,000 more. Gray is free. So $2,000 versus 
Remember, we're $25,000 away from the scat pack, and we're going to beat the scat pack all day long. Comes with these 20-inch these wheels. And then we go up to, if you want to add full self-driving, you can. It's $8,000. You can get the summoning feature. The car will come pick you up, I believe, at the, at the CVS from its parking space. So um, self-driving, the best self-driving out there, the most reliable self-driving out there. But if you don't want to pay for that, you could just pay like 100 bucks a month, I, I heard. So, so let's just leave that off and say, look, we're at $58,630 for this Model 3. Let's make sure I've got the performance. Yep, that's the performance. So let's, let's just splurge. Let's get the full self-driving, and let's go and see. Now we're at 62 dollars 64 $630, and let's go ahead and get all this stuff. Let's get the... The chargers, let's get these extra chargers. Let's get everything. What else can I get? And that's everything. So I'm getting everything. Oh, we can get the center console tray, the all weather interior liners. We got a roof rack. I don't know why I'd want a roof rack, but we're checking everything. And now we're at $64,000 versus $83,000 to beat the snot out of. A Dodge Charger Scat Pack EV. I don't know, folks. I mean, you know, I get it. It's going to look cooler. It looks nicer. And uh, I'm with you. I think it does. It's going to have a big, loud, fake exhaust. This won't. So you got to pay for that, I guess. Um, I don't want that. So what would you do? I mean, I think we're going to, if you're going to buy an EV, I want the better charging network, the better range. I want the faster car. I don't like the look as much. So that's my take on this whole thing. I don't think Carlos is is listening to the customer. I think Carlos is living in fantasy land. I think Carlos has forgotten that we're sitting at humongous interest rates right now. Uh, freaking market collapse that's been happening. Now I know it rebounded, so that's good news. But economy's questionable. Inflation's crazy. And he's coming out with these expensive cars while on these news stations saying, the customer wants cheaper cars, and we're working on that. And then you deliver this monstrosity to us, this 5,800-pound, $82,000 car that's going to get beat by a Hyundai Ioniq N, which is just beyond embarrassing, and Teslas. So I'm sorry. I wish they would have priced it right. If they would have said a fully loaded scat packs, $65,000, and the RT, if it is matched like apples to apples price-wise, then I think they would maybe have a half a chance of of pulling some people in, but making us pay so much more to go sit at charging stations, it just it doesn't make any sense. So with that, everybody, let me know what you think in the comments below. What would you buy if you were going to buy one of these things? And I know what you're going to say. You're not going to buy one. You want a gas car, just like I do. So please like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. This thing is freaking empty. Thanks, Carlos. Yeah, it's watered now. That's what happens. <laughs> Don't worry, folks. My wife hooked me up with another one. <laughs> Let's go.